What's going on, fellas? Doing a little video for T Dog over in Africa. They've got a problem with their boiler system, so we're going to incorporate some high velocity burners to reduce some of the damage that they've seen with their equipment. Okay, so these burners are going to heat the air up very hot, far hotter than a regular burner can and instead of having that direct flame impingement causing the damage that we see here in the photograph you're going to have a more spread out even high temperature heating kind of like in an oven or a kiln okay so here's a quick look at the burners before we get them out there in the field and it's kind of hard to see what's going on these are silicon carbide burners the largest one is actually a recrystallized silicon carbide which is a little bit higher up on the grade level it costs a lot more but we're not really paying attention to that now for the most part what these burners do is induce something called a high velocity flame a high velocity flame is often used in kilns and things like that where flame impingement is unacceptable so what this is is basically like a 60,000 watt hair dryer basically they blow out extremely hot air in very large volumes of it and the reason it's called a high velocity burner is because the velocity of the flame exiting the nozzle is about 50 times higher than your average burner. So let's take a look at this. All right, T-Dog, let's go for a little walk here. We just got done with the blizzard. I've already tried this once today. So we're, we're go. We're going for it again here. I've got three different silicon carbide burners. And we're going to check out the smallest one first. This one can go as high as 250 kilowatts pretty easily, but it can be set at much lower settings than that. And again, this isn't putting off that really large flame. It's a very efficient combustor. Look how white hot that gets inside of there. So it's a very efficient combustor. The amount of hot air blasting off this thing is incredible. This is about 100 milliliters a minute. That's about 60 kilowatts. We're not even getting a register on the scale yet. so. Just to give you an idea, this thing is kicking off a lot of power though. You could uh, definitely heat up of the firebox the size we've seen on your plant to 900 degrees very easily at this setting. Um, especially because of the fire brick that you have. This can also put off a large flame as well. I just wanted to show you this thing in high, high velocity mode. It's not getting red hot because of how cold out it is. There is probably the uh, the highest setting you can get on this thing. Very powerful little burner. And it doesn't need those big, huge yellow flames to crank out a lot of power. You're looking at about 240 kilowatts of power right there. And for the air consumption, we're at about 65 liters per minute. And again, these high velocity burners heat up the area so much hotter than a regular flame can because the temperature is far higher. So you don't need that big blasting fireball that's going to burn up the bottom of the boiler. This just more evenly heats up the air. And because the uh, flame has such a high velocity, the turbulence in the firebox is far higher. So you get a more even mixing. This right here just is showing you that it does have a, a high fire flame setting. It's probably putting out a lot more power here. And, man, okay, so right there, we are at about two, 300 kilowatts there. Just over, still at about the same air. I just added fuel there. So we're still at about 65 liters a minute. Brought it back down to a lower setting. This is the more ideal setting for your guys to set up. That way you don't have those flames actually oxidizing the steel. There's all types of different chemical um, actions that can take place too when those flames hit that steel. A fluxing behavior takes place. This is a little bit lower, around 50 liters per minute there. And that there is at about 180 kilowatts. So a lot higher than what me and you talked about. But these can still turn down a lot more than that. I just feel like you guys may find you want a little bit more heat than what you thought just not with a big fireball hitting the bottom of the boiler. I'll show you this thing running on low settings as well. See here we're at 40 liters per minute on the air and this is 120 kilowatts of power. 
This can be turned down way farther than this. I just didn't want to sell you these things and then you feel like you weren't in a situation where you would end up with, with not having enough power. I think you're gonna be just fine with these burners. I recommend the two smaller ones personally. They seem to be a, a lot better suited for this. This one that I'm running now has an extraordinary high fire capability, which we'll be exhibiting here in a moment. You can see that thing is just burning white hot on the inside there. And we're in blowing freezing cold wind right now, so it ain't gonna get too hot. Right there, we are hovering right around 80 liters a minute or so, and at about 240 kilowatts, a little bit under that, about 230. And the amount of uh, hot air coming off of this thing is incredible. Now here's the high fire setting. As you can see, uh, the wind is definitely mucking up the flame a little bit, but uh, very powerful flame coming out of this thing. So if you get in a situation where you just need a lot of power, because it's a high velocity flame, you can see that it's not headed up into the boiler bottom there, burning up your guys' shields that you put on the bottom of that boiler. So this is a more stiff flame, which will keep the that fluxing activity off of your system there. That right there is about 450 kilowatts or so, around 400 kilowatts. Tremendous amount of power. About 85 liters a minute of air to do that. So it does take a little bit of air, but you get this nice stiff flame. And the wind's blowing about 10 miles an hour, freezing cold wind. So it is kind of messing up the stability of that flame a bit. Don't let that mess with you. It's got a much stiffer flame than this if we had a nice, good uh, wind-free environment. So I'm going to turn this thing back down. You notice there, uh, I just turned down the uh, fuel there and left the air the same. This is a more ideal setting right here. This is a true high-velocity flame right here because we've got just a little bit of fuel with a whole lot of air. And this will make this combustor glow red hot, which also radiates thermal IR energy, which is a lot better at spreading out the heat than just a hot, drafty fireball. Because if your firebox has too much draft, secondary draft, it can actually cool things down. We don't want that. And that reminds me, I want you guys to uh, close up those bottom draft holes that you have. Here is the uh, largest one. It doesn't have the good high fire flame characteristics, but look how white hot the inside of this thing burns. See there, we're at about 85 liters a minute. And that is about 180 kilowatts there. About 150 kilowatts actually. And this one's more of a radiant heat type of burner. It really starts to kick off some IR. You can feel it standing next to the thing. Got a real nice flame to it. This, these burners can burn any fuel, by the way. Waste oil, just about anything you can get in them. So any of that heavier fractioned oil that you guys have, your sludge, you could mix your guys' good fuel with some of that fraction sludge out of the bottom of the distillation tank and make a thick uh, fuel out of it that these burners will burn. So don't let me forget about that. Me and you need to discuss this. That right there is about 300 kilowatts of power. And uh, I keep forgetting to mention that to you, so remind me. We can take the sludge you guys get or the oil and make a fuel out of that stuff. It might even burn it by itself. These things are that good at burning sludge. Look how hot that inside burn is. This is a very good ideal setting for this burner, especially in dusty environments if anyone ever is interested in using these for dryers. The flame doesn't get snuffed out by the dust like some burners can. So, unfortunately, I only have four of these large ones on hand because they sell faster than I can keep them stocked at the moment. I need to just buy a hundred of them and end it. But the uh, tariff taxes and all that crazy stuff going on right now have got me all messed up. So, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. This thing is running at uh, about 100 liters per minute of air there. And that is 120 kilowatts. With almost no flame, which is one of the more incredible attributes of these things. 
Now, it's too cold out for me to push enough air to run all three of these right now. What happens is ice forms in my airlines, and uh, this is about the best I could do. If I push more air than this, it starts freezing up on me. So, I tried to do a demonstration of both of these running full tilt, but we will not be able to do that today due to the weather. And I uh, just wanted to show you what it looks like with all three of them going. Now this setting right here is the actual ideal setting. You don't want a big monster flame burning up the bottom of the boiler again like we saw. So we're gonna have to train these guys to light these things and set them in high velocity flame mode, not high fire mode. There's a difference. High fire mode is when you got a big old fireball coming off the thing. And like I said, when that flame hits that metal, some of the fuel condenses and causes a fluxing activity to take place that washes away the protective oxide layer. And that's how that stuff just seems to burn up so quick. It's kind of weird. So there's that there. I also got some footage I want to show you guys on a thermal camera of why I suggest we remove those heat shields from the bottom of the boiler. Since we're using these new burners, I don't think we have to worry about the uh, the direct flame impingement. I recommend you guys take those heat shields and butt them directly up against the bottom of the boiler tank and just simply um, maybe uh, put a couple of bolts that are on there loosely enough to allow expansion and contraction of that thing or something or weld it all the way around and just cut it back off when it needs replaced, if it ever does. I don't think it will. This is what it looked like at the beginning of the test when I tried to start, but I just can't win for losing. I just, it's nonstop rain blizzard, rain blizzard. So I ended up canceling the test and waiting until later in the day, but just want to show you that I was trying for you, brother.